This is Paul Gregg. Uh, in documenting my research and development of backyard roller coasters over the last year or so, I um, am starting to make some videos of how I did this. And uh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about is the safety and certification that I uh, conjured up safety issues and safety rules. Um, nobody wants to see somebody get hurt when you're trying to have fun. Uh, these are my seven, and I probably will be adding to this as, uh, as we go along. Seven safety rules. I always, uh, I personally always store my cart away from the track in my garage so that uh, nobody can use it without me being there. I guess I could put a chain and paddle lock on it to prevent it from being used when I'm not there. Number two, I don't allow anybody to be near the roller coasters except me and the rider. I always uh, make sure I know where everybody is. Uh, number three, I use a automotive quality lap safety belt on the carts. And you want that attached through the steel frame, not just... Uh, to some plastic or something you know around that you want to make sure it goes to the steel frame so it's really solid uh, Four parental oversight required at all times there's a couple of ways I ensure that um, surround the coaster with construction fence or minimum uh, caution tape better would be like a metal fence and uh, so nobody could get in there and I think it would be a real hard thing, especially with my big roller coaster. If you had a 100-pound rider in there and they were going 15 miles an hour at the fast spot and a kid was out there jumping around on the track, uh, that could really uh, cause a lot of damage, especially if his leg was down in between the ties. Um, that's a lot of energy to absorb uh, in your leg, probably break uh, uh, or worse. You know, you don't want to be anywhere near something like that. So um, I don't, uh, I've thought about a motorized lift hill for now. I just push the kids up the lift hill. And I am thinking about that uh, primarily for safety. Uh, that ensures that an adult is uh, present uh, if you don't have a motorized lift hill, if you have to push them up the hill. So primarily for safety, other considerations are uh, any lift mechanism involving chains and sprockets that would uh, be strong enough to lift the uh, roller coaster up the hill would also be strong enough to do a serious damage to your hands if you got your hands in the, into the into the gears in the chain and uh, so there had to be a lot of uh, extra cages around all that stuff for safety and finally it would cost quite a bit to make a motorized lift hill probably that'd be the most expensive part of the whole thing and so I haven't done it but primarily for safety. Uh, any lift hill on a roller coaster should be required to have anti-rollback devices of some sort. And if you look uh, at my videos, you'll see these uh, anti-rollback uh, devices that are on the lift hill. In case I slip or something happens, uh, the kid is not going to go backwards down the lift hill and into a non-banked uh, sharp curve and and uh, it wasn't designed for that. So that's... Uh, that's safety. There's probably, but, but you know what? It's like with anything. It's like uh, with uh, skateboards and bicycles and swimming pools and automobiles and I suppose guns too. Um, the real, the most important safety feature is your own um, adherence to rules and uh, cognizance of, of what's going on around you and who's where and, and, uh, and that's just, you have to be just vigilant about that in any situation. It involves uh, safety. So, uh, enough on safety. The other topic I was going to cover real quick is certification. Um, and this is what we do with airplanes. Um, um, you can see here, uh, these are big pitches that would take a lot of explaining. Uh, eventually, maybe I'll get to to sharing my design reviews and, and all this information I've generated. But this is, this was during, uh, for the large roller coaster, uh, what I call certification, sandbags running around the, the track. And you always want to, as a general rule, at least one and a half times the weight 
of any rider that you're going to ever let on your roller coaster. Um, we use a one and a half factor safety in aerospace. Uh, you'd probably feel more, and, and in fact, I ended up using a higher factor of safety. I'll show you why. Um, but uh, that's how we test airplanes. Uh, any maximum uh, expected load in a lifetime is called a design load. And then there's an ultimate load that is the that design load times the factor of safety. So if you weigh 100 pounds, uh, you want to put 150 pounds of sandbags on top of your roller coaster and send it around the track a bunch of times. And then you want to look to see if any part of the track or the cart is bent or injured in any way. And if it is uh, even bent, then uh, it is not a certified track for that weight. Um, for this uh, particular one, in the end, uh, I think about last April, I had this new cart. I wanted to qualify the cart and the track. So we put 230 pounds of payload on the cart and sent it around a few times. Um, so now uh, that was successful. Nothing bent, nothing uh, looked fractured or any trouble at all. And so uh, even if it makes noise in a certain bad way, you really want to check that out. So even the... Um, so you could say that uh, 230 pounds divided by one and a half, it's qualified for a 153-pound rider. But I continue to limit the uh, weight of the rider to about 90 pounds now. Uh, what I found was when I put the, all those sandbags in, it got kind of tall. And when my son rode it, who is 176 pounds, uh, the center of gravity got higher. And so the tendency to tip sideways is, is uh, accentuated. And uh, that makes more drag, and so it just doesn't get around the track nearly as well uh, with, a, with a taller weight in it. And uh, so I'm limiting the, the riders to 90 pounds. So my factor of safety is really higher than one and a half. And I sleep well at night knowing that, and uh, as long as I'm vigilant about uh, how, how heavy a person is who can ride it, then uh, I feel good. So that's... Uh, what I have to say about safety and certification, if you do endeavor to make, and I've seen a lot of uh, pretty scary looking uh, backyard roller coasters on YouTube. And uh, I think one in particular, this kid was making a pretty tall one. It was going really fast and it had wooden rails. And uh, it looked like he was about to ride it. And then this is two years ago and no more videos after that. I always wondered what happened to him and if there was some tragedy. So uh, I guess as a general rule, if you weigh 100 pounds, uh, put more than 150 pounds of uh, rock uh, sandbags in there, run it around a few times, and then, uh, and then follow the, at very least, the safety rules I've outlined and, and even more, if you can think of them. So uh, thanks.